All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, hopefully we'll have some more folks join as we progress on. Hello and welcome to the Clear Linux OS office hours. This is uh, one of the many ways we're hoping to engage with the awesome people that are the Clear Linux community. So the format for today, um, we'll start off with a short presentation and demo from Brett, one of our engineers. Um, and then it's really just an open format for questions, concerns, and um, anything you may be having problems with. We'll have a variety of engineers on the line with different backgrounds that can help. Um, I myself am one of those people. My name is Puneet. You might have caught me on GitHub IRC forums with the username Punitzi. And just so a few notes before we get started, um, please mute your microphones um, if you don't have a question to keep the line clear. This session is being recorded. Um, please be aware of that uh, so that we can play back for folks um, that don't have the opportunity to attend right now. And go ahead and start thinking of any questions you may have now, because like I mentioned, the, the latter half of this is really just an open format for anything you guys want to talk about. And just a quick agenda, like I mentioned, Brett will be opening with a topic presentation and a demo. And then the majority of the time is, is open for Q&As or anything you want to talk about related to Clear Linux. And then we'll reserve just a little bit of time at the end to close out. And before we get started, just if you aren't already engaged on all these avenues, please check them out. Um, we're on IRC, mailing lists, GitHub, the forums, and even Twitter. Um, awesome, awesome people there. Please engage. And with that, I will hand it over to Brett to give us a presentation. Hi, everyone. I'm Brett Warden. I'm one of the content engineers for Clear Linux. I work a lot on getting things into the Linux and trying to keep it working. Today I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of managing kernel modules with DKMS. <clears throat> a little background here. I've been working on Linux for a long time, doing a lot of embedded work. Um, this is, I think, the most fun I've ever had is working on a distro here. All right, so a little background. Kernel modules are basically chunks of the kernel that you can load at runtime after the system's up and running. You're actually modifying the kernel when you load a kernel module. What are they used for? Uh, they can be device drivers. They can be tools for debugging to provide interfaces to um, performance counters in the processors, all kinds of platform features. <clears throat> When we provide clear mod, uh, when we provide kernel modules in Clear Linux, we use kernel module signing. Uh, there's a cryptographic signature applied to the modules that matches the signature in the kernel, and when you attempt to load a module, that signature is verified. And that and some other details cause kernel modules to be paired with a particular kernel release, meaning that you can't just arbitrarily load a module; it has to be one that was built at the same time in the same source tree as the kernel you're running. Kernel modules are usually provided with the kernel. Those are called entry modules, but you can also get kernel modules from outside, and we refer to those as out-of-tree modules. <clears throat> so, uh, for instance, if you have a piece of hardware that, for some reason, the driver isn't built into Clear Linux, there may be a kernel module to support it. It could be one that's in tree, in which case asking us is really the fastest way to get it because we can just turn it on. If it's not in the tree, there's still a chance we might be able to pull it in and patch it into our tree, especially if it's something that's being properly integrated and is on its way into the main kernel tree. <clears throat> Sometimes you might be developing your own kernel module, or you're just testing something out. You can build your kernel modules manually. There's a pretty simple process that integrates with the kernel's build system to do that. Um, if it's just kind of a one-time need, <clears throat> you know, that's pretty easy to do yourself. And, and most of the time, this is for some sort of out-of-tree module. Now, 
In other cases, you may be looking at a kernel module or a driver for something that just never will make it into the kernel tree, but you really want it. And it's kind of a pain because every time we upgrade the kernel, your module will no longer load. So you need a way to rebuild that kernel module to follow the kernels whenever we update them. <clears throat> One of the ways to do that is the dynamic kernel module system. This is a system uh, that was actually developed by Dell that basically registers an out of tree module, keeps track of the source, keeps track of the version, and can automatically rebuild the module anytime there's a new kernel. This is a, a simple way to you know, sustain the installation of your kernel module as we go through kernel updates. Um, but again, being an out of tree module, it's possible that changes in the kernel cause this module to no longer build correctly. And so you still, even though this automatically takes care of building it, you need to check the logs and see if for some reason it has failed to build. Here's a little bit of documentation. We need to put together some pretty nice guides for how to build kernel modules themselves and also how to use DKMS to manage those kernel modules. Uh, with that, though, we'll go into a quick little demo of showing you how DKMS works. So for this module, we've picked a, or for this demo, we picked a module that is actually a driver that allows you to control the LED colors on the front of a particular model of Intel deck. So there is one control for the ring LED here and another control for the power LED. This is a live streaming video looking at the front of a nut that I'm going to control here for the demo. It is a little bit laggy, so bear with me. You'll <clears throat> see the changes within a few seconds anyway. So if you want to use DKMS to manage a kernel module, the first thing you need to do is add a kernel bundle that includes DKMS support. In this case, I've already added it because you don't need to watch me download this and install it. <clears throat> this bundle provides um, not only the DKMS tool, but it also includes the module headers all the source files from the kernel that are needed to build modules against it. Uh, a couple of other steps that installing the bundle does. Number one, it provides an addition to the kernel command line. I mentioned earlier that we sign kernel modules cryptographically. <clears throat> so one of the things you have to do is disable enforcement of the cryptographic signature because the key for signing those modules is no longer available once the kernel is built, so your out of tree modules will not be signed. <clears throat> we added this feature to unenforce signature uh, verification. This will get added to your command line automatically when you install this bundle, but you will have to reboot for it to take effect. And you can see when we change the command line, it gets appended here. <clears throat> Another thing we do, because this is kind of a security feature, we add to the message of the day this little warning message. Um, I'll also point out that for the take effect, you've also had to disable secure boot. And this is how, so the bundle just dumps this file in, and this is how we automatically update your message of the day. <clears throat> All right, so next we're going to go ahead and clone the repository where this module is stored. This is a handy little driver that this gentleman has written for us that is actually pretty simple, but works great. Uh, let's take a look in the directory. Look at the files in here. So you have a very simple source file for the module itself. You have a make file. This fits a standard pattern for building kernel make files. And if you follow the documentation, you'll see how that works. Kind of. uh, here's the dkms.com file. This is the important part. This is how we integrate this driver with DKMS. And again, this module author has done the work for us. 
<clears throat> He's also created a handy make file target for us that actually does all of the work. Uh, well, here, let's look at the DKMS file first. Actually, so the important part, uh, the DKMS configuration, this tells DKMS this module is auto-installed only meaning it can automatically maintain it, it can rebuild it. Anytime there's a new kernel version. This gives it the name, the base name of the module to distinguish it from any other drivers you may have installed with DKMS. This tells us the path in the built modules tree where this will end up. Extra is pretty difficult for not a pre-module. <clears throat> this gives a distinctive package name by which DKMS will keep track of and refer to this driver. And there's actually versioning info, so DKMS can even manage different versions of a particular module. So now we'll go ahead and build this driver. And this make file uh, conveniently takes care of a few steps for it. So first it does a DKMS add, and you can scroll by up there. Uh, then it does a DKMS build, and it does DKMS install. Sorry, my screen's a little short, so this is all scrolling back fast. So these are the, the three steps that you actually do with DKMS, but this module takes care of it for you. <clears throat> um, very quickly, though, what you'll see is already we've built the module. It's been installed. So here's the link where it's actually built. Uh, it's been installed into our build modules path. DKMS reports that installation is completed. We'll take a look at what DKMS actually says about that. And it tells us here again is the module, or the driver name from the DKMS.com, the version again from the DKMS comp, the version of the kernel for which it's installed, and of course the architecture, and the status is installed. So part of what DKMS does is put details in a few different paths. This is kind of a state path that DKMS creates where it actually keeps the built artifacts for the kernel, uh, for this driver. And then there's another path where it keeps a copy of the source code with the version. <clears throat> so whenever DKMS goes to rebuild the module, this is where it actually pulls it from. So it keeps all of these under user source. So we can reserve the source for you. Next, we'll look at the details of the driver itself. This is the module info. You can see the path where it was installed. Here's the slash extra from the make file. And let's go ahead and load the driver. Now, now this driver, when you load it, actually creates entries in slash proc that allow you to control the LEDs. So what we have here. If we cat this, you can see a very verbose explanation of what the current status is for the power LED. This one here, you can see the brightness is 3%. It's set to always on. Other options include a few different speeds of fading or blinking and the LED color, which is currently blue. The power LED supports blue or amber. The ring LED is this outer LED here. And again, with the brightness of 2%, it's set to steady on, and the color is blue. This one actually supports a bunch more colors, but we'll change it to something a little bit more visible. So first, let's change the power LED. So we'll go ahead and set the power LED, again, with brightness 3. We'll set it to a fast fade, and we'll change the color to amber. So now you can see it kind of fading in and out. Kind of an amberish color. <clears throat> and a little more visible, we'll go ahead and change the ring LED. We'll just make it solid red. And again, pardon the lag, it actually changes instantaneously, but it takes a few seconds for the video stream to catch up. <clears throat> so now you should be able to see a nice red ring around there. Uh, this actually supports a number of different colors. This one is just more visible in the video. And if we go ahead and look at the entry, you can see the changes we've made. So, one hertz fade, amber, solid on, red. All right, we'll go ahead and change it back. <clears throat> so, you see the power LED go back, and we'll change the ring LED back to solid blue. Okay. 
Now, a couple of the things that are added by the bundle, the BKMS bundles, um, we provide some system D services to help maintain and integrate with our update process. So first of all, there's a new kernel service. This new kernel service is tied to the update triggers target, which means that any time that Selecti updates your software, this gets run. And what this does is run a short little script that attempts to identify if there's a new kernel, and if so, reinstall all of your modules. All your DKMS managed modules for that. I'll take a quick look at that script. <clears throat> it's really very short. It looks for your new default kernel image, gets the details out of that version number. If it doesn't match what your current kernel is, then it says, well, next time you boot, you're going to be booting a new kernel. Therefore, I should install all of your auto installable modules for that particular kernel version. And of course, for cleanup, then there's a corresponding service. Again, triggered by updates and also targeted to run only after we run the previous script. <coughs> that will attempt to clean up any old built modules. And this script is actually a little bit more complicated, but same idea. In this case, we read from DKMS whatever kernel modules have been installed, and then we look for a matching kernel image. If that matching kernel image doesn't exist, then we just go ahead and remove the DKMS managed module for that particular driver, that particular version, and that particular kernel. That's it in a nutshell. How do, how do you remove kernel module that's no longer there? So that would be this DKMS remove action. Oh, okay. Okay. So you list whatever, you can see a list of all the modules you have, and then mm -hmm. you can say remove some. Okay, if you have more than one. So DKMS status will show you yeah. what you have installed, and it'll show multiple. So it'll show different kernel versions and all that. Mm -hmm. um, DKMS remove. And the Intel Nuck LED, for example. And let's see. I think I have to specify the version number on here too. So the, the module version specifically from the DKMS.com. I do that. Boom. Cool. Fun. Makes me want to get a cluster of Nucks and have a little disco party. <laughs> <laughs> Does uh, anyone have any questions for Brett or kernel modules DKMF? So we, use, I mean, we support how to treat modules effectively, right? I mean, we used right. to say we didn't, but now it's, it's we we have a path to support them. Yeah, it's still always always preferable to get modules sure, free if sure. possible because we take care of the maintenance of them at that point. Right. And the out of tree modules, one very real problem is. They often don't build on the latest kernel version, especially like when a new major version comes out, such as 5.2. There's a bunch of stuff out of three that's commonly used that does not build on 5.2. And we actually do have a separate bundles for that in case you don't mind going to a uh, to an older version of the kernel. We have let's see. Uh, you could add the kernel LTS DKMS bundle that will pull in the LTS kernel, the LTS, uh, the latest LTS, which is a version 4.19, I think, and, and DKMS support for that. And a lot more of outer tree modules will build against that successfully. Is there a reason not to uh, put DKMS as part of a standard bundle on all our images? I mean, because it is, I mean, how much space does it take up? DKMS itself is pretty small. It's yeah. mostly a script. It's a large script, but still overall very small. Um, the biggest issue with that is that we have to disable module signature verification for it to mm, be usable yeah. at all. Sure. Right, so right, right. it's less about you know, the impact of having DKMS installed versus the impact of making it useful by having to disable security yeah. features. Gotcha. Yeah. It also includes the headers in C basic, right? Which that's true. a lot of people might not want on a regular system. Right, that's, you know, around 150 megabytes per kernel. Okay. Per installed kernel version. So 
specifically. All right, if there's no other questions for Brett, we'll open up the floor to any other questions you may have about Clearletics, concerns, or problems you're having. Feel free to unmute and speak up. Other distros probably just supports the ability to install kernel modules without having to go through this process, right? Uh, some other distros, I shouldn't say. Yeah, some distros. of the distros do. It depends on what, what options they've enabled for kernel module verification. Some distributions might actually distribute the signing key along with their kernel sources so that you can build modules and load them yourself. Some of them may not enable strict module signature checking. Mm -hmm. um, DKMS itself doesn't really help with those as much. Even in those circumstances, DKMS may be useful just for the sheer fact that it can automatically follow your kernel and update your out-of-tree modules. That's really what its power is. Mm -hmm. Other kernel, or I'm sorry, other Linux distributions may also distribute certain kernel modules built, uh, pre-built actually as RPMs or whatever. That are also built against the current kernel, so that you don't have to build them yourself, but they're not distributed with the, the main kernel package. Right. Are there have there been a lot of people asking for different modules to be turned on in tree over the time that you've been in this project? We've had a number of requests. Uh, probably the busiest area is Wi-Fi modules. Okay. The simple fact is there are you know thousands and thousands of drivers in the kernel, and we try to enable the ones that make sense, mm -hmm. but there are probably still thousands more that we haven't enabled that somebody might have use for. Right. And again, if it's in tree, we're almost always happy to just enable it because it's there and it will be available. But do you see whether there would be a benefit to basically having those other modules that are out of tree, but somebody to be able to just install on the fly when they need it instead of, you know, so that, <clears throat> you know, you say there are thousands and thousands of modules that are currently not compiled, right, into the tree? Well, I, I don't know the number that we haven't compiled that are good. Okay. Right. Uh, there are thousands that are compiled. <clears throat> um, the nice thing about kernel modules is they can be loaded and unloaded dynamically. Right. And when a driver is built as a module, it doesn't even have to be loaded unless you actually have the, the hardware that it supports. Okay. So it'll be present on your file system, but if nothing ever okay. demands it, it'll have to be loaded. There are cases of out of tree modules that we have actually patched into our tree. Mm -hmm. Those include the WireGuard VPN implementation and in the LTS kernel, the Oracle Virtual Box Guest Editions support drivers. Some famous uh, cases of drivers who remain out of tree for various reasons, whether it's licensing or incompatibility with kernel development processes or whatever, include things like the NVIDIA graphics drivers, probably our biggest request, and the ZFS file system drivers. Do you have, or do you know the good resource um, for figuring out why a module that's out of tree was never accepted in tree? Um, sometimes I'll be trying to figure out, you know, why, why wasn't this built in? And sometimes I can find a thread that will say, oh, you know, there's quality concerns or licensing concerns. But is there a single place that you know where you can determine that? The most authoritative source is going to be the, the mail threads on LKML, unfortunately. Okay, that's what I think. All right, folks, if there's no other questions, we'll go ahead and, and close out early. Um, thank you all for your